Well, that's annoying. We do, we have a few minutes for, um, for some questions, if they're like, and, and I love you all, but I would love to give priority to the fabulous students that are here, and if you guys don't have any. Yes. Hi. What do you think that we as young musicians need to be doing in order to bring more appreciation and awareness to classical music? <laughs> okay. So what do we, she asks, what do we need to be doing um, as young musicians to bring more awareness to classical music? And appreciation. And appreciation. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Share it. Share it with all the generosity you possess. And um, do the work that you need to do to constantly remind yourself how powerful this is. Because when you know that, I, we, I asked, um, I think Nicole, the composer, do you believe sein wir wieder gut? And she went, I think sometimes, yeah. No, actually, yeah, I do. <laughs> you guys are all, music has called you for a reason. You know, and you need to nourish that. You, it's, it's a gift. And it requires, well, it doesn't require, but um, it would be beautiful to nurture that and take care of it and amplify it in your life, in your connection with each other. Think about how you guys interact as colleagues. Are you supportive and do you build each other up? Or do you... How are you with other faculty members? How are you with other conservatories? How are you with other singers? Can you celebrate another singer's success? Can you celebrate another musician's success? Can, when people are down, can you offer music to them? I, I, I have a hard time doing that. If somebody says, would you sing something? I'm like, oh, I, I don't, I'm not very warmed up. And, and I kind of do that. You know, I, I could work on that. But share it. Take people by the hand and and bring them in. Then the big picture stuff will start to come to you. But I, I really think if we look at it in the big change, how do we save classical music, we're already lost. It's going to be the little, the little things. And personal connection. Yeah, it's a great question. Joyce, I have a question as, a, as an opera goer. Um, I thought you were a student in the front row. Uh, when, when a singer has to audition for a director or a conductor, uh, how do they, dis and they don't know the conception of the director, his concept for the role, how much acting do they put in their singing when they audition? So if in auditions, especially if you're auditioning maybe for something specific, but you don't know what the concept is for the director. Playing, chasing, that what do they want, chasing that idea in auditions or competitions is pointless. Pointless. Even if you think they, you know what they want, um, then you're out of your artistic zone. You're trying to provide what they want. And then you start to go, I, I'm, I don't know, I, I used to enjoy singing. I don't know why, you know? So. Now, that having been said, this is also a business, and so you have to be savvy, and you have to know what it is to present yourself with confidence and as yourself, and what it is to be unprofessional and unprepared. You know, you have to measure that. Um, everything that you do in your presentation, if it's organic and well thought out, if you make a gesture, that gesture will read as necessary and true. It could inspire the director. It might inspire the director. Yeah, it could. It could. Sometimes the, the great directors are constantly inspired by what they see in front of them, and, uh, and they want to help you find the best that you have. But really, that, that idea of trying to chase what do they want, because when you all start having great careers, and you go to Palermo, or Dresden, or London, you go, oh, well, what do they want here? You're constantly chasing a moving target. It has nothing to do with your artistic integrity. They want a great cherubino, you know? What does the conductor want? Mm, I, the first time I sang Cenerentola professionally was with Alberto Zedda. And of course, he's Mr. Rossini. And I thought, oh, God, what does he want? What does he want? What does he want? And, and I come and I was like, no, I'm too messed up. Worried about what he wanted. So 
so I wasn't at all thinking about my singing. And afterwards, I went up like a really good, well-trained conservatory person, and I said, Maestro, was it okay? Uh, uh, choice. Uh, yeah, si, sí, si. Sí. Uh, but the tempi or the tempi, right? See, si, how can I know? I, I listen to you another two weeks, and then I know your tempo. But you say, si, 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 canta, canta. <laughs> okay, cool, all right, cool. So, yeah, don't, don't chase that what do they want. That's, it's artistic death. Yes, hi. Hi, Miss Joyce. Um, <laughs> you've had such a fabulous journey through your career, and so I was wondering throughout the whole process, besides obviously following that process that you talk about so often, is there anything else that you could say that you wish you knew from your like earlier stages or that you wish you would have heard someone else say to you? Yeah, what else um, through my journey, my big journey, um, what I would have wanted to know? I mean, I, I think maybe it was here I got asked a similar question, maybe my first time, and the thing I would tell myself back then is it's going to be okay. I was a slow starter. You know, I was not, I, I didn't gain entry to Juilliard or Wolf Trap or, you know, I just, I wasn't that 24-year-old wunderkind like you guys are here, which is great. Um, and it was a slow journey and there were people whizzing by me. And um, so I would have told myself now it's going to be okay. I wouldn't trade that journey for anything in the universe because I had to find the strength within me. It will never, ever come from your teacher. Support will come from your teacher, but that tenacity, that inner tenacity and strength and knowledge will never come from your teacher, so don't look for it. It will never come from your coach, so don't look for it. It will never come from your stage director. It will never come from your conductor. It will never come from a colleague. It just can't. It's impossible. So that, how do I keep maintaining the joy of music? How do I believe in myself when everything is crashing down? It's your job to figure that out. And you will. I can't tell you if it will be two months or five years, but you guys are on such a great journey that it, it will. And the second you stop wasting energy looking at it from external sources, all of that energy starts to going to figure it out on your, in, in your space, you know? So it's going to be okay. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, every piece I've ever sung. <laughs> Let me start with no, everything, everything. In, in some ways, I feel like I'm more of a skydiver than a singer. <laughs> and even if I'm doing, uh, you know, voi che sapete, I have to go, jump out the plane, voi che sapete, oh my God, you know. It's, it's, Scary, if you want to call it scary, it could also be called thrilling. It could be called humbling, <laughs> intimidating, uh, life affirming. Um, I try to spin it mentally. I play a game with myself, I think, actually. Um, and, you know, I, I have a technique that I depend on. And I continue to work on that technique so that I can walk out on stage and say, okay, maybe this will not be perfect. I'll let it be what it is tonight. But I'm going to have a certain amount of, of assurity, at least just on the technique, because I've been working for 30 years. I trust that. I'll share a story. Just between us. <laughs> I arrived in New York on August 21st, and I got, I, I don't get sick very often, yeah. uh, I, and if I do, I, get, I can kind of chase it in three or four days. I got sick. I mean sick, and, it, and I, um, I did not know the body could produce copious amounts of mucus as this did, and, and I got impacted here above, and I, my ears were closed and my nose was closed. I was like, okay, it's a virus, it'll pass. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. <clears throat> 
uh, showed up to rehearsals. I did physical staging. I sang Auto Jesus seven years ago in concert, but I was banking on those five weeks of rehearsal to get it into the thing. Tick tock, tick. <laughs> okay, didn't go. Acupuncture, da da da, all this kind of stuff. It sort of broke the morning of the final dress rehearsal, which was open for public. The Metropolitan Opera opening season. And <laughs> that was a Thursday. My little voice teacher is back there. Monday, I stopped the, re the lesson 10 minutes in. I said, I can't sing. She goes, no, you can't. Uh, go see a doctor. Did another round of doctors and blah, blah, blah. And it kind of lifted. But I had to jump out of the plane 11 o'clock in the morning, never having, ha having had anything above an F sharp, because all of this was closed. And, but it was clearing. And I said, OK. It's not going to be my adalgesia of my dreams, but I'm going to phonate and I'm going to get through it. And I, it was all technique. It was scary, as was opening night. As like all the, <laughs> you know, it's scary. Um, but mentally, I sang myself through that concert. So it's mostly mental work and a lot of technical work that you can go say, I don't have that high note there, or I might forget this, but I'm prepared. I'm as prepared as I can be. And that's power. That's where your strength comes. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, you talked a lot tonight about thinking out a piece well. What questions do you ask yourself when you're learning a new piece that are kind of questions that are deeper than the surface? Like, uh, who am I? What's the scene? So yeah. So she's asking in the preparation of a piece or a role, what kinds of questions do I ask? Rather than like, who am I? Where am I coming from? Sometimes, just go back to the basics to start. You know, as I enter the room, where literally, where have I been? Where am I coming from? When I exit the stage, where am I going? What's my relationship with this person? How long, you know, with Polione, the discussion we had with David McVicker was had they actually slept together or not? You know. Will the audience ever know the answer to that question? No, but I know it. You know, what was in, in the Harry Potter series? Um, she said that she told Sn um, Alan Rickman, she told him the story of that he was really in love with Harry's mother, but nobody else knew. So from series one of however many movies there were, he was playing that he was in love with her, but nobody else knew. So that kind of thing, it not, it's not that the audience is going to see it necessarily, but it informs what you do. So all of those basic acting questions are really important to know. Then it's the kind of work we did here. Why does he end that minor, I mean major, when it sounds like it should be minor? That is such a big decision. Why do I repeat this? What is, what is happening? And, 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 and where have I come from the beginning of the thing? Why do I say palpiti instead of sospiri, this kind of thing. It's, I just ask questions and questions, and I can't give you a list of what they are. It's, um, I, I get it from, from the music, yeah, and the text, yeah. Is that, yeah. The more questions you ask, the better. There's no wrong question for sure, and all the questions are right, but it's just ask, 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 ask. Do we have one more, one, one more question? I can stay. Anyone? Anyone? OK, yes. Last question. What about difficult co-stars? How do you cope? <laughs> difficult co-stars. Well, God bless them. Here's, here's what I will tell you that I have found in my experience is um, the, ma the vast majority of people in this business are wonderful. Um, and everybody, everybody is scared. And everybody wants to be great. And we're at all at different levels of that spectrum. And sometimes the fear is the louder one. <laughs> and it's shown in not very good behavior and others. I've rarely run against people being um, malevolent in rehearsals. I've had a few co-stars that sort of, they're a little unaware that they're standing right in front of you. <laughs> so you're like, hello. Um, what I tend to do as well is, first of all, I will never give my power away on the stage to somebody else and let them uh, eat away at my 
confidence or eat away at my musicality or that kind of, I, w I won't allow that to happen. So if something needs to change, I'll have a word with them, I'll have a word with the director, if it's getting to a place that, that it's destructive. But mostly, I like to surprise them and challenge them and kind of kill them with kindness. <laughs> oh, so Kansas City. But I do, and, and I, I've had one or two colleagues that, you know, they'll look at me and I can see on their face, they go, oh, oh, you're acting, oh, oh. And then they come into the scene, you know? So I kind of like to challenge them that way. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in this scene whether you are or not. Um, I've had one, one instance where it was a quick revival, there was no rehearsal, and they were big personalities on the stage, and it was every man for himself. And it was clear, every woman, it was clear that if I didn't play that game, uh, I might as well go home. So I said, okay, and you have to know how to, you have to know how to do that. That's a last resort, um, and I don't like that situation, but sometimes. Nine times out of ten, direct uh, question and contact is the best thing, and just don't go to that level. But also don't be run over like a Mack truck. It's a balance. You guys are going to learn everything you ever need about the survival in life in, like, in this journey that you are in. All of it. All of it. It's so excited. Thank you so much for tonight. You all were fantastic. To the singers. You guys can have Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good year. Have a good season ahead. A good year.